Hello everyone, I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about T3. So T3 is your active thyroid hormone. And um, there are a lot of different nuances when it comes to making this hormone. And recently, I've been hearing a lot of people cite a myth that is going around when it comes to conversion from T4 to T3. So we're gonna be talking about all of that in this video. Um, if you like our content, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the share if you know somebody that you think could be helped by our content. Um, our job is just to get information out to more women so that they can get great care. So without further ado, we are talking about T3. So T3 is your active thyroid hormone. When your thyroid makes hormone, it makes about 90% T4, which is mostly inactive and acts as a reservoir, and then it makes about 10% T3. The rest of our T3 is made in our peripheral tissues, specifically mostly in the liver. The top three are going to be the liver, the kidney, and the muscle tissues. Um, and so when we're thinking about activating our thyroid hormone, right, the health of those tissues really matter. Now I said I'm going to talk about a myth. The myth that I'm going to talk about is this idea that your T3 is methylated from T4, particularly in the GI tract. This has been something that's been going around and it is wrong. Um, you do not methylate your thyroid hormone. What you do is you cleave off an iodine. So T4 is literally has four iodines and then T3 has three iodines. And in order to get there, we have to remove an iodine. We do not methylate it. And so um, a lot of people are coming in saying, well, I, I've been prescribed this methylation supplement that I heard about and that's gonna help my thyroid. Um, that's not gonna help conversion to T3 because that's not the way that this works biochemically. Um, so I mentioned that the majority of conversion to T3 occurs in the liver. That means that having healthy liver function is really important if you wanna get optimal thyroid. Um, what's really interesting about T3, and I have talked about this in previous videos, is that you will convert an amount of your thyroid, your T4, to reverse T3. Reverse T3 is inactive although it looks just like T3 and binds the same receptor sites. So it basically just blocks up the cellular mechanism of using T3 appropriately. Everybody will convert to some reverse T3. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our conversion is not out of whack to reverse T3. And when we get things like liver damage um, or a high amount of inflammation, our body tends to want to protect us, right? We've talked a lot about in our videos about how the body is smart. And so it wants to protect you. And in order to protect you, it dials down your metabolism by increasing your conversion to reverse T3. And a lot of people wanna go around this. And you know what? The body is smart. It's really, really hard to go around the body. So I do want to talk about um, a few things that are necessary to allow us to have optimal conversion um, of T4 to T3. So the first thing is selenium. That is a selenium dependent pathway, which means if you do not have enough selenium, you will be going down the reverse T3 route. Sorry, that's the way the body takes it. Um, and so selenium is really important. This is easy to get in because it's literally four Brazil nuts a day will give you your therapeutic dose of selenium. So super duper easy to get in. The next one is zinc. Zinc is also really, really important for conversion of T4 to T3. Um, there are a number of foods that are high in zinc, like pumpkin seeds are high in zinc, um, and that's a really great way to get that in. The third thing is iron. So iron is a tricky one, as is zinc actually. You don't want these things to ever be too high, right? With zinc, we don't want to excessively supplement zinc because it can throw off things like copper because they use the same receptor sites. So being precise matters. Um, but with iron, being precise really matters because iron toxicity is a thing. But we do know that if you are iron deficient, you are not going to convert to T3 as easily. And you are going to convert to reverse T3 way more. Again, the body's kind of creating these protective mechanisms to keep itself on track. The other things that um, impact 
watch our body's conversion of T4 to T3 is going to be high stress. I know it's not everybody's favorite topic because lowering stress, let's face it, is hard work. Um, but we know that higher levels of cortisol lead to lower levels of T3. And we know that you will have higher amounts of that inactive reverse T3 if your cortisol is higher. So managing stress is going to be really important. We would do this with things like deep breathing, um, a guided meditation, um, with maybe getting off of social media and not being keyed up on all of the things that we see all the time. Um, with taking a walk, with getting out into the sunshine, um, maybe with a little bit of grounding, getting your feet into the grass. All of those things can be super helpful for cortisol levels, which in turn will help your thyroid. Um, a lot of the time when I get patients that think that it's a thyroid issue and their thyroid actually looks picture perfect, we have to go back up to cortisol and we have to start to treat that because it impacts the thyroid system dramatically. Finally, the last thing that I'm going to say will really impact your conversion of T4 to T3 is going to be fasting for long periods of time and uh, low carbohydrate diets for long periods of time. Again, we talked about in this video the fact that the body is smart. And so it is trying to maintain your health, maintain your ability to live um, long term. And so it sees this long periods of fasting or low carbohydrate diet as a lowering of resources. Um, and in past times, right, a lowering of resources would have equaled death. Um, and the body doesn't really like that. And so one of the things that it will do rather quickly is dial down that conversion of T4 to T3 to lower your resting metabolism in order to reserve resources. When it comes to thyroid health, I think that we need to start to pay attention to the little things, um, to our nutrient status, to our stress, um, to the way that we manage kind of our diet and the world around us, um, because it all plays a huge huge, huge role. And we need to look at things like liver health um, because that is the main place that you convert your thyroid into the active form. And so if your liver health is subpar, you're not going to be getting anywhere very quickly. And finally, we have to stop saying that our methylation is going to help with thyroid conversion because it is not. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. We'll see you next time for our next video.